G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, the market's taken a bit of a dip. That's not surprising though. That's yeah, generally what happens after it pumps a bit. Uh, and it really is stuck in that kind of sideways motion at the moment. Gas rising a little bit. Uh, BTC dominance sitting around the kind of same. Uh, and the market cap is obviously down, hence why things are going down. Uh, Bitcoin down 2% over seven days. But again, it is really just ranging at the moment. We'll have a look at the chart very soon. Uh, and I, I haven't had a chance to look, but I'm going to say there's probably not too many big gainers. But let's have a look. Were there any gainers? Actually, there probably will be one or two. All right, there we go. Band protocols done all right. Sushi just continues to... Uh, rise upwards compound so I stand corrected <laughs> there are some gains and block stack look I'm really happy the block stack are finally uh, doing some good things uh, and yeah hopefully there's going to be some uh, further good news about block stack v chain but again these are all kind of single digit movers really only these three are kind of you know good for the crypto kind of world you could say but I mean these the seven day movers they are absolutely fantastic but what about losses are there any big losses nah not losses aren't too bad again NEM it was always going to have a correction so there we go it's down 8.1 percent and I expect it to continue to come down a little bit more it really did have a quite a big move Ocean Protocol is really hurting at the moment, uh, but you know what can you do? I'm going to say it probably had a good pump before. Iota, Elrond, look, really none of these losses are too bad over the 24 hours. Uh, some of these losses over the seven days, uh, not too great. Stellar, again, that that price was always going to come down from the big pump that it had, uh, but you know. What can you do? You can't have the big massive gains without the the losses. That's the way it works. All right, look, let's move on to the BTC. Uh, chart this is where we're sitting at the moment and we've just been kind of coiling this is the uptrend that we've been on for a while uh, hasn't sort of broken um, but I mean we have kind of wicked through and kind of bounced off it we've really got three more days to find out whether Bitcoin is gonna break through this resistance you know that psychological barrier of sort of 19,700 you know we could round it off to 20,000 or is it going to break this trend and then come down to the uh, downside? Now, look, I did chuck in our moving averages. So here's the 50-day moving average. We're well above it. We are way, way above the 100-day moving average, and we're really a long way off the 200-day moving average. So look, it is possible that we could come back down and test this. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but look, based on previous history, there are at least a couple of times where Bitcoin will dump down to the 200 day moving average and just kind of wreck everybody. But that is a short term uh, movement that happens. It doesn't stay down there for very long. So we can move back here. We can see that it wasn't that long ago, we were at the 200 day moving average back in April. So after you know the big crash and that, uh, and then it's just started to uh, track away from it. We've been pretty close a couple of times, uh, but we are a fair way off that at the moment. But as we can see, 8th, 9th, 10th, and then the 11th, and really the 12th, uh, you know, could be in there. But I'd say within the next three days, we're going to know what happens. Bitcoin is either going to push above and continue this uptrend, or, uh, I mean, look, it could travel sideways, but I just don't think it's going to travel sideways. I, I think we're either going to break out to the upside or we're going to break out to the downside. Now that I've said that, just watch, it'll probably trade sideways just to show me up because that's what Bitcoin does. Bitcoin does whatever it wants and just when you think you got it figured out, uh, it'll prove you wrong. Uh, it is uh, quite a tricky and slippery uh, little sucker at times. But look, that's what I love about Bitcoin. It, it can be so unpredictable and you know when you think it's going to you know, skyrocket, unfortunately it'll turn around and you know slap you in the face and dump real hard on you and then when you think it's going to dump even further it'll turn around and just rocket higher so yeah but anyway i do think in the next couple of days by the 12th of december we should know what's going to happen it'll broken this uh trend one way or the other but again I, th I think a big move is going to be made and it's either going to be to the upside or the downside i don't think we travel sideways for too much longer we've sort of been here for a while already so since the 24th of November, so we're you know getting on to about sort of 
you know, three-ish weeks that we've been traveling sideways, Bitcoin generally doesn't travel sideways for that long in a bear market. I'm not saying it never does it, but it generally doesn't. You know, we've got one here where it was, what, 3rd of September uh, till the 18th of October. So, well, there we go. We do have one. I'm going to stand corrected, actually. It does. So it could quite, uh, absolutely do that. But I, I just get the feeling that it's not going to. I think there's some things in play that uh, it's going to go one way or the other. It's going to go up or it's going to go down. I don't see too much sideways action. All right, let's have a look at an article I found. Institutions will protect Bitcoin from government overreach, says Eric Voorhees. Look, I hope that's true. I, you know, Again, the regulation is needed. We just don't want overregulation. We don't want this system to end up like the old system or what is the current system because that just doesn't work. We need a new system. You know, that global reset, something that's, you know, immutable and, you know, can't be, you know, as heavily manipulated as the old system was. Now, don't get me wrong, there's still manipulation in this market. There'll always be manipulation in markets. But hopefully this market is decentralized enough that, you know, that's not what happens. But unfortunately, long term, I would say that institutions will end up buying up, you know, most Bitcoin because uh, they'll eventually get enough of a foothold that they will uh, continually to manipulate it. And we'll have to look for, you know, new ways to make big dollars. I think there's plenty of upside left in crypto. I just think there will come a time where that upside will be uh not as profitable there'll be something else out there uh, where the big gains can be made and that is what we need to look for you know what's the next big thing bitcoin is still the next big thing because it hasn't become the big thing yet uh, and look other cryptocurrencies as well i think there's probably at least a decade or two of uh, plenty of upside for anyone getting into it but i think in you know 10 to 20 years time i think it will be unfortunately much the same as the markets that we sort of currently have heavy manipulated, heavily manipulated by you know, big business and all the rest of it. Although I, I don't think they'll be able to manipulate it in the same way. You can't create more Bitcoin. There is 21 million and that's it. So uh, that is something that may sort of save it. But very interesting. Bitcoiners should embrace institutional adoption as it keeps everyone honest, says Eric Voorhees. Uh, that part is definitely not true. It doesn't keep everyone honest. But I do believe we need institutional adoption. Uh, unfortunately, the institutions are the worst, uh, and they get away with it too. They, you know, can, you know, fund terrorist organisations and well, not so much fund them, but uh, funnel their money for them and all the rest of it, and nothing happens to them. You know, they they get a monetary fine. Whereas if me and you were to do that, you know, we'd be in jail for, you know, a long, long time. So institutions uh, do not keep it fair. Uh, they have things very lopsided, uh, and I dread the day that that happens with the cryptocurrency markets. All right, following 2.0, Blockstacks STX may be uh, free to trade in the US. All right, I've got some Blockstack. It's been doing pretty well. Uh, let's have a bit of a read. Blockstack may have successfully transformed its XTX token from securities registration to commodity status. Blockstack may be about to go where no token has gone before by metamorphosizing from a security to a non-security as far as US regulators are concerned. In a Monday blog post, Blockstack CEO Mun Munib Ali published a legal memorandum in which the firm argues that its Stacks token, STX, will no longer qualify as securities once the new blockchain launches. The firm predicts that Stacks Blockchain 2.0 will be live at the end of 2020 or the beginning of 21. So that's in the next few weeks. But what does the new blockchain have to do with securities laws? Blockstack held its initial coin offering under an exemption from the Securities and Exchange Commission, under which Blockstack registered information about its token and operations with SEC, but also prevented from trading freely within the United States. The idea behind securities is that they are based on the efforts of a third party and therefore more subject to manipulation or potential fraud than commodities like oil, coin, or indeed Bitcoin, whose value does not depend on overwhelmingly on the actions of one party. The Howey test is the usual means by determining which is an investment contract, which is the label under which most tokenized securities fall. Peter Blockstack's filing, oh, per Blockstack's filing, sorry, not Peter, it believes the new blockchain will prove to have met this test. So as I said, 
maybe there's some good news for Blockstack. The price has generally been doing pretty well, and again, it was regulated, uh, and now it believes it will no longer be a security. So this could be big news for Blockstack, and I have my, you know, position in it. Nothing too major, but I think I'm up 30, 40 percent from when I got in, uh, and you know, hopefully this pushes that even higher. Time will tell. All right, millennials are twice as likely to buy Bitcoin than gold as safe haven investment. And again, I think the massive swings in Bitcoin, uh, particularly the downsides, will uh, slow down and look even the upsides, unfortunately. I think this and maybe the next bull run could be the biggest ones that are ever seen because of the institutional adoption. And maybe the real retail adoption doesn't even happen till the next bull run. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. But I think after that, I don't think Bitcoin has the violent swings uh, that it had once upon a time. So, um, and again, uh, you know, the younger generation, this is what they look at. Everything's digitalized. Everything's on the computer. You know, they'll look at gold and it'll be like, I've got a pretty rock. <laughs> and that's kind of what it is. You know, there'll be gold bugs out there that hate that. And look, I understand. I, I invested in gold. But the upside just wasn't there. And again, it's what I see coming in the future. You need to stay ahead of the market. Millennials aren't going to go to gold. The only time gold's ever going to make a massive comeback is if the world turns to poo uh, and you know there is no kind of digital uh, stuff out there. Other than that, Bitcoin's going to be it and or some other variant, some other digital form. Uh, you know, gold, we don't know... Uh, you know how much gold is still out there and we just continue to mine gold so it's not uh, it's not finite uh, it is rare but not finite uh, and again you know we start moving to you know other planets and things like that they could have massive gold stacks there we don't know and then all of a sudden gold's not really worth that much anymore so for me I believe digital currencies is the future it's not to say I don't believe gold doesn't have a place it definitely does it can still be used as a store of value but it just doesn't have the upside and the newer generation are not going to go to it unless, again, you know, all infrastructure sort of falls down, you know, and there's no more internet, you know, something drastic happens, a solar flare and, you know, all the power gets knocked out or something like that. Yes, then gold is going to be worth, you know, 10 times as much as what it's worth now. But short of that happening, this is the future. And that's why I've put my money into it. I got out of gold and silver and all the rest of it. And look, that may backfire on me. You know, the new reset that they're talking about uh, could just basically, you know, boost the price of gold up to 30000 and, you know, silver to 5000 and then we'll all really be sort of kicking ourselves. But, you know, who knows? We don't know if that's happening. And I would hate to miss out on the gains that are currently coming from the digital space at the moment. All right, why hodling your Bitcoin pays off? Bitcoin investors are witnessing a meteoric rise of the digital asset and have accumulated more than 170% year-to-date returns. Most recently, Bitcoin's uh, avid Citric economist, I can't even say that name, Noriel Rubini, recently softened his stance in an interview stating that Bitcoin may be, may be partial store of value. Uh, that doesn't make sense. Maybe a good partial store of value, I'm guessing. Uh, ranks of several prominent names in finance and business have endorsed Bitcoin, from BVI hedge fund manager Paul Tudor Jones to venture capitalist Shamath uh, Palapataya and billionaire investor Stanley Druckenmiller. This week, Larry Fink, CEO of BlackRock, the world's largest asset management firm, with $7. trillion in AUM, stated that he believes Bitcoin can, can evolve to become a global market asset and that the currency will achieve new highs in the coming years. Fink also noticed that Bitcoin market cap is over $350 billion and has surpassed the size of global firms such as MasterCard and Coca-Cola. Again, another reason why I'm uh, so heavily into the digital space. I really do think this is the future and it is just going to take, you know, a lot of people that run these companies, you know, and I don't want to throw shade because I'm not exactly a spring chicken, but they're old 
and the older you get you generally not always but you generally kind of get set in your ways and you just find it harder to deal with change that is you know a semi-common thing that happens to uh, people as they age and that's including the people that run these companies that's why the young company uh, guys like you know Jack Dorsey and things like that and you know uh, Chamath Palapatai and that they're not that old They've seen this and they're like, this is the future. And so they've gone heavily into it. Anthony Pompliano, you know what I mean? It's the younger generation that we need to watch because that is where things will go. You know, if you're old enough and you have children, have you ever tried to change your child's mind once they've made their mind up about something? It is near impossible. It is just once they've, you know, made their mind up that this is it and that's how it's being done, short of, you know, going old school and getting the the belt out and you know giving them a bit of a smack they're just they're going to do what they're going to do and this is what is happening here within all of this young people are going digital they're moving to uh bitcoin and you know xrp and ethereum and you know all these other ones that is the future if you can't see it that's unfortunate you'll get left behind i'm not saying there'll be no returns for you but you will miss out on the massive returns and look in 20 30 years time from now there could possibly be something new again. We just don't know, and that's what we need to keep an eye out for. We can't just be, you know, 100% cryptocurrency forever. Well, we can, but we're going to miss out on other opportunities. But I believe Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies is the opportunity of a lifetime for us, for this generation. Whether that turns out to be true or not, you know, time will tell, but I believe it is, and that's why I've invested in it. I want to make life-changing wealth, and I want to have you know an opportunity to enjoy you know the rest of my years that i'm going to spend on this earth and not have to you know just you know really slug it out for the rest of my life uh in the current system that is not set up to uh you know let the average man uh succeed you know they they trap the average man unfortunately you know the hours we work and the pay we get and you know the interest rates we can be given and all the rest of it but anyway that's getting on a bit of a rant now this is very interesting and what makes me think uh, Bitcoin, again, it's either going up or it's going down. I don't think it's going to travel sideways for too much longer. MicroStrategy, they already own, you know, 400, I think maybe half a million Bitcoin plans, $400 million raise, net proceeds will fund more Bitcoin buyers. Again, Michael Saylor is going to go down as one of the most brilliant uh, company managers uh, of all time, I believe. Uh, I think, you know, he, again, you know, he works in, in an industry that understands all the technicals and that of this kind of stuff. And he's just gone, you know, he's gone heavy in. And look, again, so have I and a number of other people. And any, what, anyone watching this video has probably done the same. I really do think in years to come, he's going to be thought of as, you know, an oracle, just, you know. One of the greats, you know, like the Drucken Millers and, you know, Warren Buffett's and all the rest of it. Uh, you know, whether he sticks with just Bitcoin or not, or, you know, gets into Ethereum and other things as well, uh, it's hard to know. But look, just Bitcoin alone, you know, if they get 400 million and then they go and buy Bitcoin, uh, I think it's going to push the price up because I think there's a lot of other uh, industries that are doing the same. And it's what makes me think it's less chance that we're going to have a big dump. I'm not saying we can't because that's always possible. That's why I've got funds on the side for if that happens. But I just think it's more unlikely. So, you know, again, I don't know how many Bitcoin he's going to get for 400 million, uh, considering the price of it now being around 20,000 and what it may be once they raise that money. But again, this is what makes me think we're either going to push up high, I don't think we're going to travel sideways for too long, or, you know, there is going to be that heavy correction. And maybe we come back down and touch that 200-day moving average. What I do know is at some stage during this bull run, that is what's going to happen. Because, the you know, the big firms with the real big amounts of money will have got into Bitcoin and found their position early. And then they're going to start to manipulate the market. Again, let's say someone gets in at, you know, gets $400 million worth of Bitcoin and they get it at an average price of 20000 per Bitcoin. Once Bitcoin reaches, let's say, I don't know, 30,000, 
they've made a ton of money they can start to play they will happily you know sort of sell some to see if they can push it lower and create some fud and they'll have cash waiting on the side for you know when it comes back and hits the 200 day moving average and things like that i can absolutely guarantee you i just think at the moment it's still too early but i definitely think somewhere around that twenty five thousand to thirty five thousand dollar mark again when everyone's built their positions at twenty thousand or less you start you're going to start to see that then you know the big players with you know hundreds and thousands of bitcoin uh, will have made you know exponential amount of profit they're going to start to sell some to see if they can force the market down and then to buy in cheaper and look that they will there'll be some coordinated efforts by uh maybe some individuals but definitely conglomerates you know businesses will get together and you know, you know again maybe some individuals and exchanges and all the rest of it they, they will play their games i can guarantee you that's what's going to happen that's why the little guy like you and me we got to have money on the side and we got to be ready to buy those dips when they happen get in and then they are going to get less back don't be one of the people who's you know panic sells and you know he's trying to long the market and short the market that is a very dangerous game and i don't do leverage trading uh, I understand, you know, sort of some fundamentals of how it works, uh, but I, I just don't like it. it. It's too much like gambling. I like investing better. Uh, and look, some swing trades. You know, you see Bitcoin, uh, you know, get down to around that 200-day moving average. You know, there's going to be some trades to be made when that happens. You know, the Bitcoin will probably drop and altcoins will fluctuate up a little bit first. So if you can catch that, you know, then you can... You know, sell some profits out of the altcoins and look to buy Bitcoin when it gets back uh, to its low point, whatever that may be. And lucky last, how uh, NVIDIA, Square and PayPal stocks are benefiting from soaring Bitcoin prices. Bitcoin prices have surged by over 160% year to date. 170, 160%, let's say 165. We've got uh, different people with different uh, scores there. Driven by multiple factors, including higher institutional interest, fintech companies, PayPal and Square uh, move into crypto space and also a view that uh, scarce digital currency could be a hedge against uh, inflation and weakling US dollar. Now look, NVIDIA, uh, they make uh, computer stuff that is obviously being used to mine all of these coins and all the rest of it. So of course they're going to do well at the moment. You know, the demand for, you know, Bitcoin mining rigs and all the rest of it, it's only going to grow. Uh, and don't get me wrong, they'll, you know, whoever's in that space is going to have to prepare for the next bear market because there will be a bear market. I can absolutely guarantee you that. Uh and that's when you know mining sort of hurts you a little bit uh, but anyway that, that's a st separate story but it is interesting to see that you know again there, there's companies out there that will do really really well from bitcoin going up and guess what happens if they've been in the space long enough they know that there's going to be a bear cycle so they are going to sell will they sell all of it no but they will sell enough to get them through you know the 12 month bear cycle that you have before the next bull market starts again that's that's just the way it goes that is uh how this game works all right that's it from me hit that like button down below hit that subscribe button i put out daily content stay safe be kind to one another hopefully you're on that game train and i'll see you next time